lived here for 17 years, and so it's been quite a while, but I've recently added some more things onto it, and I made my own herbal medicine garden because I make so many herbal medicine teas, and I take them, and I prescribe them to the people who are here as well. So I'll just hit a few of the highlights, you know, that might be of interest to you. These are ones that we use all the time. Like this plant here is caguena, and this is used for fevers and for irritated liver and kidneys. And also it's used to grow hair, and so it will stimulate hair growth. And it works anywhere on the body too, so you can just... You know, put it on your legs if you want more hair on your legs, too. <laughs> no. and, and so, this is a plant. It's, it, it's got a very esoteric nua nuca birum. But what it's used for is for uh, taking apart complications in the inner field so that you're more attractive. More attractive. More attractive, and so it's an esoteric plant. Mm. Now we have a number of plants like that because as I said, the cultures are extremely given to belief in uh, witchcraft, okay? And so this is another one that's used in the same way. This is called lingua de perro, which means tongue of the dog. And so this one is used also for attraction. You, you, make, uh, you make a bath out of it and you bathe with it, or you make an extract and put it on as perfume and it brings in love and attention. So, you can imagine how many people use that. <laughs> and so, this is a very beautiful plant and a very useful one. This is called chamomile in English and manzanilla in Spanish. And it's for soothing the stomach and for aiding in the, in the digestion. Now, my daughter, my oldest daughter, who's now 27, was named after this plant because my wife and I used to go to the market in Bolivia all the time. And I always, always say, well, we have to get some chamomile. She said, what cam chamomile manzanilla? Oh, yeah, okay, there it is. We buy a bunch of chamomile. And then later on, she says, what are we going to name this girl? And she says, well, why don't you name it Camille? And so Camille's named after this plant. And I've used it most of my life in combination with mint. Now, mint is, is this plant right down here. You see the one that's planted in a line? Oh, yeah. That's uh, mint, and it's extremely good for expelling gas from the intestines. And so that with chamomile is practically a perfect formula for curing any sort of stomach problem and for avoiding other stomach problems in the future. Now this is one of my favorite plants. And you'll see upstairs that we have this at, on, our, on our altar up there. This is called ojo de gato. And ojo de gato means eye of the cat. And the reason they call it eye of the cat is because it, it, when you wash your face with it, with your eyelids closed, It'll absorb and it will give you night vision and allow you to see at night. And so the Indians use this frequently for war parties and for hunting parties, give them nocturnal vision. But one of the most beautiful things about this plant and why I have it in my house is because it's so incredibly dramatic and expressive and every leaf looks like the Rorschach pattern. Everyone is different. Everyone has a different design and the dramatic combination of purple and green is, is very, very attractive to me. And so see, some of them look like candlesticks in an Orthodox church, like that with a flame in the middle. Others look like, you know, something similar, but definitely from another religion. <laughs> and then these other ones, and it's just really fine. So they're like little scrimshaws and so on. And so they're incredibly expressive. And that's what shows us that plants are the same as us. They're extremely, extremely ostentatious. They're trying to dress well. They're trying to look good. Why? Because they're trying to attract mates. They want to attract pollinators. They want to attract bees. They want to, to, to move them out and expand their community and their influence. So that's why they survived thousands of years. And they got their act really well together. And they take care of each other. They have a network of influence. How, how do you take those? How would you take, well, you, you would take it uh, by cutting it off and walking away with it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you're going to take it, you just soak it in water overnight. You can simmer it or heat up the water a little bit, and that will extract, you know, 
extract the medicine from it. And then the water will change color. It would seem to be kind of green. And then is all you do is you close your eyes and you wash your face with it. And you wash your face. And if you want to, you can put it on a cloth and you can lay down on your bed and pour it right over your face, right over your eyes. And you wake up and your eyes are wet, your eyes are dilated. And you walk out and you have not eaten. Now I tried it a few times, enough to verify its uh, ability to, to perform. And then I went back to just using my lanterns. <laughs> Because I didn't want to play with any possible side effects. But I have it here, so in case my flashlights go, go bad, I can always resort to this one. And I believe that it works because I've tried it many times and it's great. So uh, another one of my favorite plants is Yerba Luisa. And I think I have about uh, 35 Yerba Luisa plants. And you can see it, they're all chopped down. Because we drink Yerba Luisa every day. And see, there's some new ones, younger ones. That one of my friends and I planted yesterday, and these are extremely good for cleaning the kidneys and for keeping the water system and the body healthy. Now, the water system is very important because it helps us go through changes and assimilate lessons and assimilate new challenges very quickly. Now, our system of medicine works off the elements fire, earth, water and wind. Now, the wind is for creativity. Too much wind is psychotic, crazy. Now, earth is for stability and the ability to keep your feet on the ground and not be all wishy-washy. The water system, which is what this works with, goes through the kidneys and the urinary tract, and that allows us to process changes and keeps things moving. And then we have the fire, and fire is something that has to be in balance so that you are strong, aggressive, but effective. Not over the top, but just right in the middle. So the way we analyze the psychology of a person or even the physical state of a person is we see how is the balance between their fire, their wind, their earth, and their water. If it's all in balance, there'll be a very centered, happy, and powerful person who's able to do everything. And so we have plans to balance out each one of those attributes that we have in our energy field. And so that's one uh, diagnosis perspective. Not the only one by any means, but it's a very useful one. Now, let's see, we've got a few more here that you might be interested in. This is, uh, this is called Brazilian Toei. Now, Toei is a, is a very powerful hallucinogen that allows you to leave your body and allows you to fuse with your environment. And they use it to divine secrets and to find out where they lost things. But I trim a little bit of this off and put it in with my mint tea because it has a very pungent odor and it brings in a certain otherworldliness to your state of mind for a short period of time. You, if you take it in large doses, it has a strong effect. It sometimes counter effect. That's why we don't use it in our ayahuasca. Many people will use it in the ayahuasca brew. We drink only classical ayahuasca in Chikuna. And you'll see us cook in the days that you're here. And I'll show you the materials, you know, tomorrow probably. We'll have time to do that. So that's just a few highlights that, you know, you might be able to get an idea of the extensiveness of these plants. Because they go very, very far in the right direction. And you can pretty much heal anything that you want to if you have the information in your head and also if you have a subtle perception of how much to use, when to pick the plant. Because some plants guard all their energy in the root overnight and then they let it out again in the morning. Now, if you're going to harvest a plant before dawn or at dawn, you probably be harvesting the roots because all the energy is there. If you're going to harvest it at sundown, you'd harvest it before that energy comes out of the leaves and goes back down to the root. So that's why we coordinate with moon and sun cycles. We coordinate with times of day, with climate changes. And most of all, we coordinate with the energy in our body. So when we hold the plant, does it make us, does it make us strong? And sometimes you'll, you'll try to you hold the plant in your hand. Now, if the plant 
resonates with your body, you're not going to be, it's going to be, you have a lot of strength. Just right through the skin. And we test plants that way all the time. So it's a beautiful thing that herbalists use. And obviously, it's a different philosophy. It's a respect for the fact that these are living beings. They breathe, they interact, they, they, they breed, they do, their, they do their evolution work, and they've been around for a long time before we showed up, and they'll probably be around for a long time after we take the hike and go to another planet. <laughs> So I'm glad you guys are here. We'll go up and have some tea up there and, and visit for a while. And thanks for hearing me out. Thank you. It's really good to meet you guys. Thank you.